Hello again and welcome to another edition of JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. We are already into match week 5 of the new season and all the teams seem to have found their shooting boots as goals continue to punctuate the local league. This week is no different as we kick things off from the Drax Hall Sports Complex for our opening match of Sunday's doubleheader with St. Anne-based Lime Hall entertaining Cavalier FC. Here are the highlights. Of all. Lime Hall against Cavalier. That's the matchup. And Jack's Hall Sports Complex is where we're at. Here we go. Lime Hall. Jaheim Williams in goal. Damani Sewell, the captain. Carlos Campbell. Kevin Graham, veteran of these of, of, of this competition. Sajay Anderson, Latroy Leng, Shaquille Kane, Zidane Brown, Javon Ellis, Ronaldo Brown, and Michael Edwards, head coach David Price. And they have the son of uh, the St. Anne's most famous footballing Rastaman, Danny Beckford, <laughs> uh, the president of the FA. His son, Imani, wears the number 15. He starts on the bench this afternoon. Yeah, when he's on the park, you can't miss him. Dreadlocks just the same. But yeah, they've ditched the four. 2-3-1 system and they're looking to go more attacking with a 4-3-3. For Cavalier, in their traditional colours, Jadine White wears number 31, he's in goal, Giovanni Leng, Kyle Ming, Orlando Russell, Jalmara Calvin, Chris Ainsworth, we spoke about him at the top, Jaheim Fraser, Shanil Thomas, Shamara Watson, Mario Smith, Jerome McCleary, good to see uh, Nikoshe Murray on the bench number 8, he plays in the position of a number 6, but he wears number 8, Rudolph Speed is the technical director. So we began under tough conditions. Watson flipping this cross in. Ainsworth. I give him the benefit of the doubt, saying that the uneven surface caused him to misjudge the bounce of the ball. Shanil Thomas really ought to have scored there. Skimmed off his forehead. And this cross once again at the back post. Thomas gathers. Another missed header. And then Kevin Graham, the moment of quality in the game, running through, through the hands of Jadine White for 1 0. And that's how Lime Hall found the lead. That goal really ought to have been the winner. Kevin Graham beating his chest, exultant. Ainsworth. Fraser. Header missed. And you're seeing so many set-piece opportunities because that's how Cavalier manufactured the bulk of their dangerous moments or created the bulk of the dangerous moments that they did create. Kyle Ming there, running through, not getting the header on target. Brave from Jaheim Williams, fell heavily and required lengthy treatment from that. Kane turning this one behind. Leng. A lot of power, but no direction. And then here's Hansen, through on goal. Expected some quality from him, but couldn't beat J.D. White. Effort not good enough. Cross, digging out the cross and Ling with the body there, ensuring that there wasn't an easy header to capitalize on. Henry, on target, but those won't beat J.D. White. And then this, Giovanni Leng spreads the play. Leng dives in, shouldn't have dived in, shouldn't have sold himself. Ainsworth finds a good cross that was turned home by Ronaldo Robinson. The Lime Hall players screamed foul because they said, ref, it was hands. He used his arm. And the replay, every angle of the replay is showing you that Ronaldo Robinson used his left arm to turn the ball home. That ought not to have counted with our speed. We'll enjoy that nonetheless. Look at Robinson. Not quite sure how to celebrate. But yeah, referee Hayden missed that one. And on that point, the game turned from Lime Hall 1. Cavalier nil to 1-1. One, one. 10 shots by Lime Hall, 5 on target. Cavalier 16 shots, only 2 on target. There were 27 fouls, 5 yellow cards. No red cards, of course. 18 corners. Cavalier, 18 corners. Lime Hall, none. Cavalier had the ball for 58% of the time. And they finished 1-1. Cavalier stealing a point at the end with a goal that ought not to have stood. Dwight Jeremiah is downstairs with a uh, forlorn-looking Javon Ellis, or man of the match, the Cavalier, the Lime Hall number eight. 
Javan, you gave everything. I don't think there's a thread on your jersey or shorts that didn't get wet today. You were excellent shielding that back line. Almost every time the Cavalier came at you, you were the one there intercepting. How difficult was it for you to really walk away with just a point today? Well, it's a very, very difficult, it's a very, very hard feeling right now to explain right now. It's very tough. As you can see, we give our, our all, you know, we stuck to the task the coach asked us to do and, you know, put in the work. And we should have got a result out of this game, but, you know, unfortunately, it's tough, it's football. And we play against a very, you know, a very well-coached team. They are the um, Kanka Cup champion, as you can see. So we are a new team and it's very hard and we're just, you know, developing. So. Home team Lime Hall managing to pick up their second point of the new campaign while it was back-to-back -back draws for Cavalier. We jump into our first break here on JPL in 30. Don't go anywhere. We have another mouth-watering encounter to come right after the break. staying with us for JPL in 30. The second match of Sunday's doubleheader saw leaders and host Mount Pleasant Academy looking to keep their perfect record intact as they welcome Harborview who has been less than stellar defensively in recent matches. Let's pick up the full match highlights. It's now time for the main event, the defending champions Mount Pleasant against the stars of the East Harborview and this action, this game promises a lot of excitement. We hope that the excitement is complemented by goals for your entertainment and your viewing pleasure. Here they are starting with Shaquan Davis, Sule Makala, Fitzroy Cummings, Shaquille Dyer, Odain Murray, Kimoni Bailey, Ron Howell, Marlon Allen, Romeo Guthrie, Okasa Chung, and Devonte Campbell. Chung, of course, very young still, but cut his teeth at Harborview. And Theodore Tapper Whitmore is the man directing affairs. Yeah, Chong will be up against his old club. Two goals so far this season. Here's Harborview. They're starting with Anthony Bennett in goal, Oderland Harding, Trey Bennett, Shamari Dyer, Omar Thompson, Shaquille Bradford, Romaine Brackenridge, Jashon Anglin, Ajuma Johnson has left Arnett Gardens now with Harborview. David Reed and Kasim Priestley will provide the prompting and the passing from midfield for coach Ludlow Bernard. Nation got us on the way, under the bright afternoon sun. Goal-saving clearance from Kasim Priestley there. Then here's Chung to Guthrie. Guthrie lines up the effort straight at Anthony Bennett. Just drifting to his left just a little bit. Then Guthrie found this pass. Bailey, ball wouldn't sit for him. He was under pressure from Brackenridge. He'll have a big say in the game though. And then look at this, Campbell stepping inside the tackle of Trey Bennett. Referee Nation, expertly positioned. Talking about extra expert positioning, what about Anthony Bennett? Saving from Okasa Chung, his former teammate at Harborview. Here's Devontae Campbell, Romeo Guthrie lining up one, got the power for the direction of. And then Bailey's cross, or his free kick rather, begging to be, to be turned in at the back post by Cummings. Cummings didn't stretch, didn't gamble. Then look at this. Dyer onto the forehead of Bradford, beats the goalkeeper, all ends up. Ball cannons off the crossbar. And that's so close, that's as close as Harborview came. Shamari Dyer getting the jump on the defenders. And then look at Campbell. Exchange passes, Devontae does, with Sule Makala, runs on to it. And a big save from Anthony Bennett at his near post. Lovely football all around, attacking team and the goalkeeper for the defending team. Then after an exchange of passes, Campbell slips it to Bailey. Bailey steps away from Trey Bailey, from Overland Harding, and rifles it into the top left-hand corner. Around Harding, away from Dyer. 
And as I noted, he struck this ball with so much force. Force hammer he applied to that. Too much power for Anthony Bennett to do anything with. Bailey, exultant and why not? And then Guthrie to the back stick. Bailey with the head down. Cummings, brilliant stop there with his feet from Anthony Bennett. Marlon Allen, take note by Shamari Dyer. For some reason, Shamari Dyer had it in for Marlon Allen from the first whistle and paid the price. Look at Shandy James. This is Bennett, or Bailey rather. Works it on the left foot. He didn't get the power this time. And Bennett with the smart save. Jashawn Anglin with the free kick straight at Shaquan Davis. And then look at this. Look at Guthrie. Acres of space. He opens up the Harborview defense. The slip from Trey Bennett helped him. Bennett sliding all over the place. And then look at Devontae Campbell. Insouciant with the finish. The pass deserved a sweet finish. And Devontae Campbell applied it with a cherry on top. O'Shea Nation calling time after about 93 minutes. That's all she wrote. Mount Pleasant, the defending champions. Two goals better than Harborview this afternoon. 2 0. Dwight Jeremiah is in place. And he has Devontae Campbell, our man of the match. Devante Campbell, normally when we see a, a, a car operating certain way on the road, we tell him to lift the hood to see what engine is in it. I mean, from the opening whistle, you've been a thorn in the side of Harborview. I mean, what are you operating on? I mean, you're, you're a bundle of energy out there. Well, it's, it's pure hard work and, and not giving up. It's just work, work, work. I mean, in terms of uh, running and doing your work behind the scene, you must be doing more work than other players on this team. Yes, de definitely. Most definitely, because you have to you have to work harder in training to make much easier. You you scored a goal today, really good finish. But tell me about the pass you got from Guthrie. How good was it? It was a it was a wonderful pass. All I had to do was put the ball in the back of the net, and that's what I did. I mean, you're playing with some good players. Your goal was a good one. A Bailey's goal. You would have seen his third goal that of the season. Yeah. And three classical goals. Yeah. Good goals, you could say. Yeah, excellent goal. Well, Campbell, you're doing well. You're really causing a lot of problems in this Premier League. Long may it continue. Good goal. Yeah, Good thanks. game. All right, there you have it. Our man of the match, Devontae Campbell. So Mount Pleasant continue to surge in the Jamaica Premier League after picking up their fifth straight win. Much more action still to come as we go to another break. Stay with us. Welcome back to JPL in 30. Kingston's Stadium East Field is where we bring you our Monday night doubleheader. First up, East Kingston-based Tivoli Gardens have been riding high following their last outing. Let's see how they fared against Clarendon-based outfit Humble Lion. Donald Oliver takes us through the full match highlights. We are live from the National Stadium East Field as we prepare for an afternoon of football here and uh, in the Rainview Jamaica Premier League, Timothy Gardens go up against Humber Lion. Timothy Gardens with the opportunity to go uh, as high as uh, third spot with uh, three points in the league, as high as second spot with three points in the league this uh, afternoon. Not a lot of changes uh, to a team that has been fairly successful uh, this season. Nicholas Clark, of course, the captain, and uh, he's, of course, between the sticks. Barrington Price, Odin Pennicott, Pennycook and Richard Brown, the back three in the middle of the back, Alton Lewis, uh, Kevin Garnett, Howard Morris and Keno Simpson. And up top, uh, we see Nikelia Fuller, Justin Dunn, of course, was uh, four goals to his name so far this season. And their number 11, Anthony Nelson, looking to be a part of the scorecard. Yeah, a lot of firepower up front for Tivoli Gardens. A lot of youth, full exuberance also. Humble Lion hoping to roar. 
uh, this evening. Prince Daniel Smith himself, Aurora, is between the sticks. They have a back four of Fabian Pasco, uh, Ricardo Campbell, Tevor Colesbrin, and uh, the veteran Xavier Virgo in the middle of the park of FIBA Chambers. And Javansi, who has a couple goals to his name so far this season, and of course, the aforementioned Jardel Williams. Up top, they are looking to be on the score sheet, not quite yet. Uh, as Sharp, including their number seven, Roshane Sharp, Andre Clennon, and Jermaine Christian. Yeah, a lot of strength for Humberline in their midfield. You mentioned their captain, Andrew Vanzi. He's probably the most dangerous player from set pieces in this league. But also look out for Jardel Williams, a young player in attacking midfield, looking to impose himself. The shortest player on the pitch, at number 21. Can't miss him. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here, this game was going at a mile a minute. And Tiffany Gardens got the goal early. Just it done. Pretty much picking off, picking off from where he left off in that match against Nani Gardens, where he scored a hat trick and scored one. Pretty early against Humberline here. Good give and go with Morris. And done with the finish. And again, some good work to be had here and done with the effort that was just wide of the mark smith was sprinting across trying to get there they had opportunities done again orchestrating this one swept that ball inside to morris and morris knew he should have done better there that was a big chance morris was robbed of the ball and it went the other way and they were back in the contest. It's a free goal here. Barrington tries thinking that his keeper was on the goal line. Wasn't the most convincing header anyway. Yeah, it was dangerous regardless of whether he thought his keeper was back there. Dangerous play. And you can see what he said there. He, he's not speaking to me. Didn't know exactly where his keeper was on that occasion. He was on the end of a, another good ball. Couldn't find the target. And then done. Look at the work here. Then Lewis. And then on the platter for Morris. And Horrid Morris getting his goal there. The first of the night. Lewis serving it up easy for him. And they were ecstatic. And in the second half, opportunity that was brilliantly taken. Justin Dunn, what a finish that was. Yep, and he was overcome with emotion. Virgo's ball inside was looking for Andre Clennon, and how did he miss that one? That should have been a target, he knows it. And they had opportunities here and uh, took forever to make his mind up when he actually did. Shot was off target, Javon Smith. Knew he should have done better there. But this game had a whole lot of chances. And Dunn's ball inside found Morris, who got his second of the night. A really good game by both these players. Morris getting his second. What a game for Tivoli Gardens. As we take a look at the full-time statistics here, Tivoli Gardens, they had 10 shots, seven of which were on target. They were pretty accurate, weren't they? Humbline didn't have a, a shot on target. They committed 16 fouls though, three more than uh, Tivoli Gardens. They also had the majority of the yellow cards in this one and the majority of the corner kicks as well. And Tivoli Gardens with most of the possession at 53%. Coach, I was harping on about the defense coming into this game, but it kind of let you down today. Yeah, um, there's not really a lot positive that I can say today. I mean, I didn't think we show up today. Um, defensively, we were, we were out of shape. You know, we, we just didn't look interested in the game. And 
you know, I have it down to a bad game. And this is the worst display I've seen for a long time with the team. And we just have to forget it very quickly and get ourselves ready for the next game. But there's very little that I can say positive out of this game. Yeah, I'm I disappointed with... the way the team played and I expected more from them today. Coach, a really good performance today. What do you make of it? Uh, there's always room for improvement. Uh, despite of, you know, we scoring all goals today. I think it could have been more, but poor decision making and faulty execution. Tivoli Gardens continue their resurgence as they seal back-to-back -back wins in the league. The second match of the doubleheader on Monday saw perennial contenders Waterhouse welcoming Beer United. Here is Donald Oliver once again. Hello and welcome to the National Stadium East Field, part of the Independence Park Complex. And we are here for Monday Night Football. And it's uh, former champions, Waterhouse. They will be entertaining Veer United out of the parish of Clarendon. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Waterhouse. Kemar Foster, the captain between the sticks. They have a back four of Blair, Simpson, Wilson, and Keneal Hyde in the middle of the park. Andre Smith, uh, Devonte Walker, and of course, Nikoi Christian. And up top, that's where all the goals have come from. All seven goals, Thomas with two, Brian with three, Fletcher with two. Javin Brian has been a key cog in this team so far. Let's see if he can get back on the score sheet today. Now let's take a look at the starting lineup of Veer United. Roger Williams, of course, is between the sticks. They have a back four of Pinnock, Clark, Donovan Clark, that is, who returns to the starting lineup. Alvin Strawn and Kemoy Phillips in the middle of the park. Javier Brown, Sujay Graham and Dylan Clark up top. Dustin Cohen with a goal to his name, Jason Dyer and Ricardo Dennis. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here from the National Stadium East Field, Waterhouse, they really started out with a lot of purpose. And the Blair's ball inside the box was brilliant for Javain Bryan. You can watch this over and over. Bryan with a wonderful finish there in the ninth minute of play. Emphatic two. Waterhouse with the advantage. Then Blair again. He's having a really good game. Confidence rising. <laughs> a raised eyebrow there. That one over the top. And this effort again. Trying to pepper the goal of Roger Williams. But that didn't miss by much as well from Devante Walker. And Fletcher kept this one in place. Some really good work sending this one inside and it was made easy for Brian. Scoring a second goal in the 25th minute there. Really good work by Fletcher. And Fletcher finding Brian who just nodded home at the back post. Then Christian sending that out wide and First time connection, wasn't a bad one at all. And then in the second half, the poacher in Brian activated the initial header of the woodwork. And then the follow up by Javain Brian across the line. And the Waterhouse supporters were happy with the hat trick from their number nine. And then Dennis, not on target, twisting and turning, dragging that shot just wide of the mark. And then this bit of play here, the header from Pinnock, diving header just past the post. Then the challenge came in from Simpson. I felt he get a touch, the referee didn't think so. And the Waterhouse players couldn't believe the call against them. But Brown converted the captain of Veer. Foster guessing the right way, but wasn't really near it. And then, close to the end, Jaheim Dorman pretty much putting a lid on things. That was the icing on the cake. Dorman opening up. His scorecard for this season. And the sub who came off the bench. 
had shut the door on Veer United. And that was all she wrote at the end. As we see the full-time statistics, Waterhouse with 11 shots, 7 on target. Veer United only had the one shot on target. They committed 18 fouls, nine more than Waterhouse. And Veer United has the majority of the yellow cards as well. Uh, Waterhouse getting four corners, one more than Veer United. And the Waterhouse had the majority of the possession as well at 54%. United coach, it was a hard game today. What do you think the flaws were in this performance? I thought we started poorly. Conceded two early goals. Never defended the back post properly. And we we're always chasing the game after that. And you were chasing the game, but towards the end of the game, I saw a lot of good attacking play. Do you wish that the team would have gotten together some of those patterns earlier? Yes, we have to do some analysis. We never just started like we wanted to play football. We came out the second half, intensity was up, the movement was better, and then we conceded again at the back post again. So I thought that's where we lost the game. We just never defended properly. Before this game, very United had improved a lot coming into this game for at the start of the season. I'm sure you won't let this damper your spirits too much. Well, like I said, you know, there were positives, especially in the second half. We just have to tighten up, up the back. Once we can defend properly and continue to progress, we will improve as the season goes. All right, much respect, Coach Douglas. All right, thank you. No Coach Gordon, I asked you about Javain Bryan before the game. You said he was all hard work. Your team worked hard all around the field today. Yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of the result, it was a good result for us. Um, Javin Bryant, brilliant. But I told you before, I mean, he feeds out the supply of the team and he plays with the team and his work ethics is, it just shows just a reward in terms of how hard he has been working. And your team worked hard, as I mentioned, but also I think Nikoi Christian has slotted in really well. What do you think he adds to your midfield? I think he has a lot of creativity. Um, there's a lot more work to be done in terms of without the ball. And I also believe that we also use our weakness in, our, in the last game to help chop our opponent tonight. And the reason why we got a lot of goal coming from the flanks. So let's take a look at the full match week results. Lime Hall 1-1 with Cavalier. Port United with a 2-0 win over Malines United, Treasure Beach and Dunby Holding. Drawing nil all. Mount Pleasant with a 2-0 win over Harbour View. Arnett Gardens beating Montague United by three goals to one. Tivoli with a 4-1 victory over Humber Lion earlier today. And of course, it's a similar win for Waterhouse over Veer United. As we take a look at the point standings at the moment, Mount Pleasant with a perfect four from four. They have 12 points. Waterhouse in second spot on 10. Tivoli Gardens with victory today. They are in third spot on nine. Same amount of points as Portman United. Arnett Gardens and Cavalier just rounding out the top six at the moment. Don't be holding in Malines United. Uh, they have some work to do along with Harbourview and Lime Hall who all have two points. That's how we put a wrap on JPL in 30 on your home of champions, Sportsmax. Tune in next week for another exciting edition.